Well, hello everyone, and thank you for joining me at Masterhorn Investing. Today is November 1st, 2022, one week to an election day. Uh, Federal Reserve raising interest rates today, a lot going on. What we wanna discuss here is what can what should we be doing today in today's market? What's going on with the economy? I'm just gonna be looking at a few uh, investment ideas for today and uh, try to make a few additional posts uh, weekly. Basically the overall market uh, is overvalued. So we're kind of looking at what can happen from here. Can the market, can the market run a little bit? Sure it could. But overall, we're still looking at a downtrend in the market and things being highly overpriced. So next year, as we go into a recession and the market start anticipating that, we're expecting a lot more sell-offs. At least I am. So one of the, one of the things you want to look at is the total market cap to the gross domestic product. So the D, the GDP, is the sum total of all goods and services sold in the United States, uh, which includes all software and cars and food and retail sales and accounting and legal and any kind of product or service, haircuts. Typically, it ranges when you have the total market cap over the GDP, it generally ranges in the 0.5 to 1% area. So anything above 1% or one is gonna be you know, overvalued. So let's look and see where we are today. So the metric, this metric, this uh, market cap to GDP gained a lot of po uh, popularity from the father of investing, Ben Graham, who taught it to his star pupil, Warren Buffett. And um, at the top of the housing market bubble, you'll be able to see on the next slide, uh, the indicator stood at 1.06, so it was kind of high. It's above that 1% level. At the dot-com boom, the market was running and it hit 1.45, so it was extremely overvalued at that point. So where are we now? Well, the market's hit two for the first time ever, uh, the end of last year, when the markets peaked. And even after the most recent sell-offs down through October of this year, we're still sitting at 1.5, which is above where we were during the dot-com boom back in 2000, or well, about 1999 to 2000 range. So let's, let's look at the chart. So over here, we have the, uh, you know, the top of the market dot com era, and you see that was sitting up here at that 1.4 range, kind of a range. We steadily have been steadily climbing over the last number of years till we hit uh, this two range, and now we back down to we're about one and a half. So that still shows that over this 50 year period, we are still extremely overvalued as far as stocks go, as compared to uh, GDP. The scary thing is that things are slowing. Interest rates are spiking faster than they have in the last 40 or 50 years. And um, all the effects of these interest rates have not shown up yet in the economy, all the layoffs and the slowdowns. So that's still yet to come. So we still have a pretty good market sell off. In fact, a lot of people are still predicting another 40 to 50 to even 75% additional declines from here. So what's another way we can measure risk? price to sales ratio. So the price to sales is you take the price of a stock and compare it to the, its sales. And typically it should run, uh, most growth stocks are in the range of like 150 to 200, some maybe up at 300 if they're really fast growers. Uh, just an average good stock is kind of an SP 500, steady like a GM or Toyota Motors, they'll be below one. So let's look at the price to issue. Let's look at the S&P 500. So we took all the stocks in the S&P 500, averaged them out, and looked at their price to sales ratios just on an average. We're sitting up here at 400. That above 400, like 450. That's the highest it's ever been in history. Price to sales ratio. So you can see where we were back here about 2007 before we had that downturn in the market where the market dropped 50%. Yeah we were sitting up here in the range of like 150, 170, where normally it's around 100. So it was high, but nothing like it is today. Let's look at just some automakers, for example. So I'm gonna give you an idea on a stock to buy here or a, an option to buy um, on, on a stock. So if we look at auto industry, you have GM over here, 55 billion in assets, ratio of 39. VW, 89 billion in assets, 34. Ford market cap, not so much assets. I said mar it's market cap, not, not assets. 53 billion in market cap, ratio 35. Toyota, 87. 
Um, and then you have Tesla, which is at 1,035. So that's 10 times, well, actually more than that. That's, it's more than 10 times uh, Toyota. It's like, I was at 30 times higher than like to, to, than uh, Ford and VW and GM. So where does uh, Rivian sit? Well, Rivian sits at about 6,100. 6, it's just huge, way off the charts. So based on this, Tesla could drop in half and still have a price to or a, a price to sales ratio of over 500. Thus, Tesla is still way overvalued and could decline 50% and still be overvalued. And so if we're in a recession, that has a likelihood of drop, dropping. But Tesla is greatly loved. People love Tesla. So it's hard to get that price to go down because they love Elon Musk and so forth. So Rivian is a much different story. story. It's valued, its price to sales ratio is at 6,100. Now compare that to like all the other automakers out there that are like 34 and stuff. Rivian is so overpriced that if it dropped 95% from its current price of 3550, it would still have a price to sales ratio above 300, which is six times the price, to, price ratio of most of the other manufacturers, almost 10 times that of like GM. So Rivian is extremely high priced right now and overvalued. So what's a good option, something you can do? So your first recommendation today or a first uh, investment idea is to buy Rivian puts. So you buy, you wanna buy one and give it, you wanna buy it time so it can have time to decline as we go into next year and we start hitting these recession times and the price starts to drop. So if you bought a 30 put, so Rivian's sitting up here at, uh, say 34, then if you buy a 30 put, it'd have to drop below 30 is the idea. But if you buy a June 2023 30 put on Rivian, symbol R-I-V-N, um, and you put a stock, you know, you use your stock price of uh, 30, maybe you could use 32.50 even if you want to be a little more conservative. There's a very good chance that if the Rivian even just dropped down to like 25 that you could three times your money so if it dropped down to it dropped in half you could make a lot much more than three times your money like five or ten times your money and if the price were to really drop like 90 percent like it could well you'd make you know a couple thousand times your money so that just gives you a good option uh something to look at no pun intended caterpillar let's look at caterpillar Caterpillar is another stock that's kind of, it's overvalued. You notice that uh, this is like, we're gonna go back and look at a chart that's like a, uh, oh, it's a little over a year and a half, I guess. You can see these little peaks that Caterpillar was hitting uh, when it was thinking that we're just in the peak markets. So like after COVID and people are building like crazy, Caterpillar is selling new equipment like crazy. They hit these peak, these, these peaks. And then it started kind of this decline. You notice it's kind of had this decline going like this. And the peaks have been kind of coming down this way. So we kind of have this channel going. Well, just this last week, so from mid-October, where uh, Caterpillar was sitting at like at 164, it took this huge run over the last two weeks, expecting that the Fed is going to stop lowering it, slowing interest rates. They might even lower interest rates instead of raising them. Uh, and Caterpillar just went on this tear where it just, just ran up to like 220 and is back up to these levels again, which is some of the highest levels it's ever seen. This sucker is way overvalued. So any hiccups in the market or the economy is gonna send this thing right back down to these levels. So Caterpillar is very economic sensitive. So it's been a quite a volatile stock this year. So it's just recently jumped back up to this 220 range from like the 164. And the 164 is like a two year low since the COVID times. So there's a very good chance that Caterpillar is still gonna keep up this volatility and can just easily just drop down below 200 just on a, just, just on normal trading, but any slowdown in the market and it's gonna go back down below the 165 range. So well, with the same idea here with uh, Cat, Caterpillar, we could give ourselves some time and buy a May 19, 2023 put. And then uh, don't put in more than, don't pay more than five bucks for it uh, 
a contract. Now, a put commands 100 shares. So a $5 put's really $500 is what it costs you to buy it. If you bought two puts, it'd be a thousand bucks. Three puts, 1500 bucks. That kind of an idea. Now, don't you, puts can lose all their money. So this is something you don't want to put a lot into. But what we're trying to do is risk a small amount of our portfolio, say 500 bucks, for the opportunity to maybe triple, quadruple, or 10 times our money. So if you buy a put, uh, like a May 19 put, and Caterpillar drops back down to, say, that 164 range between, in, between now and February or something, these things will, will, will run quite a bit. So your $5 put could easily be worth, you know, 30, 35, $40, $50. And it can three, five, or 10 times itself. So my next rec, my next uh, option investment ad, uh, idea is on a cat. Buying a put, May 2019-2023. So just to give you an idea again on Caterpillar, so this is just this year. I just want you to be able to see this down slide a little bit better. See how this how we're making this kind of like downtrend, and then this downtrend going up here like this. Well, we've been in this channel, and right now we're like above the channel, which gives us shows us that we're on the high end of uh, Caterpillar. So it, the chances of it going higher right now are very slim. So this is why it's a very good opportunity to buy a put. We're not buying it when it's already down here at some low level. We're buying it when it's on this peak after a huge market run up, expecting interest rates to slow down or the Fed to be more conservative coming into this uh, meeting on February 1st. Uh, and so buying that put gives you a very good option opportunity to make some money. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about today is Bitcoin. So I want to keep this short. I'm only going to talk about these three things today. Rivian put, the, the Caterpillar put, and Bitcoin. Bitcoin is still in a downtrend. So here we have, this is a, kind of the, uh, this downtrend is going on here. You see with the 200 day moving average kind of moving down this way. That's this line. Then over here we have another little line here with like the uh, 100 day moving average. Well, Bitcoin's having a hard time getting above these averages. So if Bitcoin took a little run here over the next couple of weeks or month, it may get back up to its moving average, but it's going to head south again. That means it's going to go down some more. So where do we think it's going to go? Well, you can see we had sort of this double top up here where it hit that 65,000 and 69,000 range. And it originally started from this blip right here. That puts us in this area here. That's our downturn target. Right now, we have what they call a bear flag going. So when, a, when the stock is going down, or in this case, Bitcoin, so the stock, it's coming down like this, and then it heads sideways like this, it'll break out in the same direction that it was going before it met, went into that flag. This is known as a flag. So if the stock is going down, it's known as a bear flag because we're in a bear market. Stock's going down, has a flag, then it'll continue the trend down. If it's doing an opposite, if it's going up and has a flag, it'll generally keep on going up afterwards. That'd be a bull flag. So we are currently in a bear flag for bull coin and Bitcoin. So, so it's going to be, we're, I'm expecting it to continue its downward trend as it breaks out of this flag. And it's probably going to happen when the stocks kind of go down again. So it could have happened next month. Sure. Could happen next week. Mm, maybe I doubt it. This is probably something that's going to take place over the next several months. It's going to go through this channel, it's gonna break out to the downside and has a very good chance of coming to this level here to match that, which is around 10,000, 10 to 12,000. So there's a very good chance of this going down to 10 to 12,000. Now when things are in bear markets, a lot of times they overshoot, they go lower than you would expect. So I'm thinking rather than that, it's probably gonna go down to this area here. That was the area that Bitcoin hit when it, during March of 2000, and Bitcoin hit 3,500. So I'm thinking that as my, kind of my lower end, uh, 3,500. So be prepared. So if you're, if you're not in Bitcoin right now, it's too early to buy. If you're in Bitcoin, you can just hold on and buy some more if it goes down, but you'd also have a better chance of like, let's say you had one coin, that's $20,000 worth. You could sell that and probably buy it back and get two coins when it gets down here to 10,000. So there's a chance to, so I personally wouldn't be in Bitcoin. In fact, I sold online. So my thinking is if you're in Bitcoin, it's still not a buy. 
And if you're not willing to buy it, it's probably not worth being in it. So you could sell what you have, or if you're thinking of just buying some more, ride it out with what you have, and then if it goes down some more, buy some more. So, but it's not really a buy just yet. So Bitcoin, since it's not currently a buy, what do we want to do? Well, we want to look to dollar cost average in when the price hits what we hits our target, which is in that 10 to 12,000 range, we could start. So let's say you had 10,000 you wanted to invest into Bitcoin. You take like one fifth of it or one sixth of it and invest it in at those prices. So let's say you put a target, let's say you put a buy order in it, 11,500. That'd be 2,000 bucks, let's say. So you buy 2,000, then you can put in more buy orders at, at 10, 5, 9, 5, 8, 5, 7, 5. And if it goes all the way down to three and a half, well, you're going to be buying it. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, and you're going to have an average price, say, of whatever, 8,500. That gets you a good average price because we don't know what it's going to do. It may go down and kind of bounce around for a while, around 10 and 12, and then start heading higher. And so in which case, you would have bought some at 11, 5, 10, 5. Maybe if it just doesn't go down, you decide to buy some more. <clears throat> so if it takes a run, great, you got some in there. If it goes lower, great, you buy some more. And if it starts to run, you can always buy some more at 12 or 13 or something on the way back up. But uh, that's kind of my strategy. So again, I'm looking for the prices to go down below 10,000, but uh, pretty pretty positively between 10, 10 and uh, 12. So that's our uh, that's our update for today. Hope you enjoyed the show. If you, if you liked it, hit the like button. <clears throat> Share it with your friends so they can also have some ideas for investing op uh, opportunities. And I'll keep you updated on some additional investment opportunities after the Fed uh, rate makes their interest rate change. They'll be looking for uh, opportunities where I look. We look at TQQQ or SQQQ to buy or sell the Nasdaq and try to make money there with a triple and so forth. So we'll discuss those down the road. And you have a great day.